As far as whether my work is based on the physical instrument itself or a concept, I would say that it's really both because my work comes out of an engagement with material. It is an experience of music as sculpture. Music on multiple levels at once, dimensional, moving like through space. I was interested in discovering new sounds coming out of uh, sculpture and sculpture materials. My dad had an architectural approach in a way to his practice, and so I always had this kind of influence from him. I looked for a way to engage with the technical aspect of things. There's like a uh, oscillation between creativity and being rooted in the world of reality of uh, construction or uh, engineering. And I oscillate, you know, and I, I like that because it's kind of refreshing to have somewhere to go, you know, back and forth. And, This is all modular. There's a frame that wraps around, there's a back plate and a soundboard, and the string pulls against this. It's based on the idea of a harp, the soundboard of a harp. Think of a harp like this, okay? Mm -hmm. Turn on its side, that's what this is with the bridge in the middle, okay? I wanted to be able to, to do it myself. Um, and it was real, I'm really happy that I, that I could do it. And the thing that's tough about this is that it's thick here and then it's thinner here, it's gradually thinner. And so uh, it's done that way by hand with a plane. You know, it's probably endless where it could go because, you know, think of Stradivarius and the violin. It's like, you know, things could be altered about this construction that improve the tone. When I first discovered this sound, it was by accident, and um, I was working with a long string because I was inspired by Alvin Lussier's installation, Music on a Long Thin Wire. That operates in a totally different principle, but it gave me the idea to explore, you know, what might a long wire sound like if I manipulated it manually. I created a child's walkie-talkie telephone using two coffee cans with a wire suspended in, in between. And I sang into one side, put a microphone at the other end, and used that to filter my voice. I was, I was interested in elect, you know, trying to get some electronic sounding effects, uh, but just acoustically. And so I tried bowing this wire with a, with a bow, you know. But I didn't get very much sound out of it. It was a really kind of a, a white noise, uh, kind of um, so uh, one day I moved past this string. I was I hit it by accident. I was walking, and there was a tone there, and uh, I was so surprised and just touched it with my fingers, and it was like, wow, um, that's amazing. Uh, but it took um, a year or so for me to understand how to tune this. I perform by rubbing the string along the length. It's like a frictional action. And in the longitudinal mode, tension has no bearing on pitch. And the reason why I'm doing it, though, is to um, increase the resonance. When these wires are tight, I do uh, articulations with my fingertips by pressure changes, and so when I've got a, something nice and tight to push against, then I can make those shapes more clearly. But I have to be careful because this wire is so thin, it could easily break. And it does.
I've been interested in singing ever since I was in high school in Memphis. I became very fascinated with music that originated in my hometown, the blues. You could um, extrapolate that into soul music. I studied that just again and again and again. It was like really fascinating. And I could say that I applied that same fascination to my study of Indian music. There again, it's, there's this very specific ornamentation that is not in the Western equal tempered scale. Everything that I've done, I've wanted to use it to incorporate into an authentic voice. One of my earliest sound sculptures was a piece called Streetwalker. Actually, I named the piece itself the Metal Skirt Sound Sculpture. It was made out of metal and looked a bit like a garbage can. I corrugated the metal and uh, attached um, guitar strings from four edges of the skirt. So as I walked, when I stepped forward with one foot, the back string stretched out and produced a rising pitch. Meanwhile, the front string is squeezing in and producing a falling pitch. And at the same time, on the other leg, the opposite was occurring. So it's like this kind of mix-up of rising and falling all at once. I decided to walk down the street where the prostitutes worked in Minneapolis. I wanted to, and I became a cartoon of the a female movement. There was a man in a telephone booth, <laughs> and he just like leaned out of the telephone booth and said, need some oil? You know, it's just like fantastic. The next note that I'm putting up is a B, and in my system I call it a 10 over 9 ratio to the A 1 over 1. And I look on my chart across and I see that it's going to be 14.89 meter. It's this string here, and then I just put the front edge of the capo at the paper and turn the lever to tighten it. In my work, the more I learn, the more there is to learn. And I feel fortunate because then there's always something to do, and I think that's a good place to be in, to be a perpetual student. My first performance with this kind of version of the long string instrument was at the Terminal New York show, 1983. This show was organized by a group of artists in Williamsburg. I would say the pioneering artist. That was in a building called the Brooklyn Army Terminal. It was built in World War II, and there were train tracks coming into the building. It was a mile-long building, incredible acoustic. I decided to use it as my studio because, as you can imagine, finding a studio for this piece has been ridiculous. And so there was an opportunity for me to have a large space. People were walking by and whatever. At the time, those were my first touches. And I didn't know much about tuning. I just used a chromatic tuner saying, oh, how about C, how about G, what is F? You know, I had no idea about tuning music. just a little flat so I'm gonna I can move it up just a couple of millimeter just intonation is a pure tuning system where waveforms 
are in alignment. The conservatory teaches technique, but doesn't really talk so much usually about the origin of what is harmony? Why is a major chord harmonic? I ask those questions, you know. I wanted to understand, why do I like how that sounds? Starting to get in tune now, the uh, resonator sustaining longer. That resonance is louder now because uh, of the phenomenon of um, sympathetic resonance. And what's happening here is that all the strings are adding, because they are all in alignment with each other as far as some sort of mathematical relationship of the waveform's uh, alignment, they have more energy. This is rosin. Rosin is used also on string instruments on the bow, but creates friction. Uh, I've ground up cello rosin into a powder and I put it on my fingertips. I also like to dissolve it in alcohol and recoat the strings with the rosin solution and overnight that will dry. If a string uh, becomes entangled and they're touching each other, it produces a squeaking sound. I got this fishing tackle, and then when I uh, had these um, capos manufactured, I asked for a little tab on the bottom. Then this hook goes through there. So then I put a weight on the floor. I just use some of the things that I bring along because I can't carry any more weight. I'm, at my maximum in traveling. Everything that I do is in service to the sound. I mean, I put so much labor into every concert. I'm working 30 hours to get ready for the concert. You know, I wouldn't go uh, to the trouble of this ridiculous contraption. If I could produce that in a different way, I, I would. I do feel that I've reached some level of satisfaction with my technique, but a day of concert, I'm always like, oh, I hope I can do it, you know, because it's not that I can just push a button. Uh, when the acoustics change in the room, you know, it really can throw me off when the public is here and the resonance dampens, you know, but there are things that I really want to share with people um, that I experience when I'm alone that I feel is miraculous.
I would say that the string itself pulls me like a thread. I'm following a thread. It requires a feeling of hyper-awareness. I walk on stage and you want this feeling of hyper-reality as if your life is a film. Just a kind of like, you know, specialness in the moment. Studio practice is my spiritual practice, um, meditation. I kind of need to do it. Um, it makes me feel better. Um, I mean, not always. It's also the monkey on my back, you know, that, you know, is nagging me, you know. Um, it's the hardest thing in my life, you know, the, my work. Mm, People who don't do it may not understand. It uh, seems like a vacation or a joke or, you know, doesn't have any uh, economic significance. And to me, it's like the most urgent thing. Literally a monkey on my back, you know. <laughs> 